Hello, horror fiends, and welcome to Guess What You're Wrong, the podcast where we dive into all things horror and spoil the hell out of every movie we discuss. With me, Big D, as your host, be prepared for a terrifyingly good time. From classic slasher flicks to contemporary horror masterpieces, we're going to explore the genre from every angle that we can and leave no stone unturned. Horror, Prince, and Shine. New conversations, same podcast. So buckle up, Bonehead, because you're going for a ride. Enjoy the show! Now, before we get into this episode too far, I just got a little disclaimer here. First off, all audio used in this podcast is used under the protection of fair use. And as with all the movie reviews that I do here on Guess What? You're Wrong. We're going to spoil the hell out of every single thing we talk about. So, you have been warned. Welcome back to another stupendously classic episode of Guess What You're Wrong. Now, tonight, I said classic. Um, but actually, before we get into that here, we got a little bit of housekeeping to do. Um, I know it's been, um, January was kind of a scream month for recording and putting out episodes and stuff. Work has been nuts. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of things in the works that are going forward uh, that we're going to be getting into. now. This episode here is my first foray into some classics. Now, I thought with the classics, everybody always thinks of, you know, and even before I had mentioned, I had wanted to tackle uh, some movies like, you know, the Universal Horror, uh, the 50s, um, nuclear uh, scare uh, horror movies like them and Tarantula and that kind of stuff. But thinking about it, and actually a friend of mine, uh, Brian, from uh, Brian's own Comics and Plants, uh, made mention to me of some other classics um, that go back a little bit further. So what we're going to do is we're starting in the 20s. That's right. You said, the, the 20s, you say? Yeah, the 1920s. Uh, the first movie we're going to be covering is actually from 1922. Nosferatu. Now, I know there's a lot of people had to have seen this, right? You had to. It's Nosferatu. I have seen this movie several times. Um, it's a silent movie, uh, so if you don't have patience for that, or if you're of the younger generation, you might not get into this too much. Now, the movie uh, was directed by F.W. Murnau. Um, IMDb, the IMDba, has credit going to uh, Bram Stoker as a writer for this movie. Um, now the stars we have, uh, we'll get into the whole Bram Stoker's Dracula thing here in a minute. Uh, Max Shrek, who plays Graf Olar, or Orlock, Graf Orlock. Alexander Grenache, who plays uh, Nacht in Hausenmachler. Gustav von Wangenheim, who plays Hutter. I'm doing my best here, okay? Um, Greta Schroeder, who plays Ellen Seinfro. Uh, George A. Sch uh, Schnell, who plays Harding. Ruth Lanzoff, who plays Ruth. Uh, and, and on and on. I mean, there's a bunch of people here in this movie. Um, this is a classic movie. Now, it is... It is Bram Stoker's Dracula, okay? The storyline... Everything, if you look at the history of this, the lawsuits, everything that happened, uh, when this movie was actually being produced and was coming out, it is directly based off of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Now, a lot of the stuff was changed uh, in the movie. They changed all the names. You know, uh, Orlock is not Dracula. Um, uh, Mina is not in there. Her name is, I think, what was her? Uh, Ellen. Yeah, it's not Mina Harker. It's Ellen. Um, it's not uh, Jonathan Harker. It's Hutter. Um, and I think Harding is the one that plays um, 
the Renfield character. So they changed, and the places were all changed too. Now this takes place, I, I, I'm guessing, I think it's in Germany. Everything's in German. So uh, the names of the actual characters were changed uh, as well as locations and stuff from the from the, mo- the movie or the book uh, Count or Dracula by Bram Stoker. Boy. Anyway, uh, the movie was, let's go over some trivia here real quick. The movie was banned, uh, and this is, thank you, IMDb, for your trivia expertise. Uh, the movie was banned in Sweden due to excessive horror. Can you get that? Banned in Sweden due to excessive horror. Um, and it was, the ban was finally lifted in 1972. Um, and there was, the history of this movie is, okay, so when it was released, Bram Stoker's wife, I, I can't remember her name, um, but uh, she was surviving, from what I understand, pretty much solely on uh, royalties from Bram Stoker's book, Dracula. When she had found out about this movie, uh, she had demanded recompense, you know? I mean, hey, you're using my husband's stuff. But you gotta pay me, dude, you know what I mean? But uh, they didn't pay her. Um, in, in the end, basically what they did was uh, they were forced to destroy every single copy that they had of this movie. Now, obviously, not all of them got destroyed. I mean, there was dist- there was versions of this movie had been distributed around the world. So it was out there. Um, some of the original, because it's a silent film, so some of the original subtitles um, and such were lost. Um, they weren't able to be found. So uh, even in a lot of the remakes that they have now, it's like I have a Criterion Collection one here, and Criterion Collection is supposed to be the bomb diggity, yo, but uh, they're not the original uh, subtitles or, you know, words on the screen um, that was originally put out with the movie because those movies supposedly were lost. Supposedly. Keep that in mind. Um all known of the prints of the negatives were destroyed under the terms of, of the settlement um, from the lawsuit by the Bram Stoker's by Bram Stoker's widow. Uh, the film would subsequently resurface through second generation reels in other countries, which is how we have the movie now. Um, and you know, Count Orlock. This let's talk about Count Orlock. This visions. The visage uh, is that the right, is that the correct word? I don't even fucking know. The image of Count Orlock and how he looks, um, it's very to me, it's reminiscent of the Salem's Lot vampire. Uh, when I was young, that movie had come out on uh, on TV. You know, it was one of those mini series that you could watch on TV. Freaked me out. Now it wasn't until years later that I had seen Nosferatu. But those vampires are, oh yeah, baby. Um, the visage, the whole image of uh, Max Shrek as Orlock, it's, it's spectacular. Um, his long fingers, the nails, his head is, you know, deformed a little bit. I can't say deformed, it's bald and he's got a big head. Um, so it really, really makes um, that character of Count Orlock uh the vampire uh dracula very effective um now also while this movie was based off of bram stoker's dracula the story um a lot of this stuff was changed like i said the the springboard for the common count dracula uh, is what we see in universal's dracula comes out in the next decade. We'll be covering that as well. But played by um, Bela Lugosi. That was the springboard for the common uh, vampire. You know, the handsome, debonair, kind of, you know, my shit don't stink kind of vampire. You know what I mean? Uh, 
But Orlock, Murnau, when he when they, when he was making this movie, this the story here behind the looks of Orlock and um, his actions and how he goes about things is very reminiscent to the actual uh, vampires of folklore um, in Eastern European countries at the time. The it wasn't until later on that you know that Count Dracula or the vampires became you know fancy, I guess you could say. Good stuff. Now, while Orlock is a count, he owns this. It, it, the storyline is the same. You know, uh, there's a rich and powerful, famous count in Transylvania who wants to buy land. Um, you know, next to, in the civilized country. Now, Hutter think Jonathan Harker was sent off to visit Count Orlock to arrange this purchase. The story sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Bram Stoker's Dracula, baby. Um, now, the film was very loosely based on Bram Stoker's book, but, you know, of course, the characters' names were changed uh, in, in an attempt to prevent legal action. Um, the subtitles and everything were all, you know, translated to French and German, um, and English and USA and all that stuff. But because of all the original prints being destroyed, they were left with some of these second generation uh, films. So in order to get some of those subtitles, they had to search far and wide. Um, and I got a little trivia, piece of trivia here that, um, let's see, the American versions went to the UK and uh, that was translated back to German for release there. When restorers were about to make a definitive version, a definitive ver version, uh, they were looking through a number of archives. Unfortunately, all the prints they found had the changed subtitles, so they gave up hope of being able to recover the originals. They later heard of a good print in an East German archive. When they got there, they found out that the print had been loaned out. The restorers were then offered to have a look at another print from the archive, which was, wasn't was considered as good uh, a print as the other one. When the restorers observed that, that print, they discovered that the original subtitles uh, were in it. The original ones they thought were gone. So that was a plus and a bonus. Um, now, some more trivia here. Many scenes featuring Graf Orlock or Count Orlock uh, were filmed. Graf Orlock? Count Or Was there another movie called Count Orlock? I don't know. I can't remember. But anyway, uh, they were filmed during a day. And when viewed in black and white, this is very, very obvious. So when you watch the movie, there are times in the movie where uh, when they're showing Orlock that the screen is blue. Okay. They did this to let you know that it's nighttime. So even though it was filmed in a day, you know, they had this blue, and it is what it is. But um, let's see, anything else here? Yeah, okay, it does, uh, the trivia here does mention Shadow of the Vampire from 2000 starring Willem Dafoe. Uh, it's a fictionalized depiction of the events surrounding the film's production based on the urban legend that Max Shrek was actually a vampire. And if you've seen that movie, uh, Shadow of the Vampire, they, Max Shrek, I mean, this was a big... Um, this was a big, oh, I don't say, a tale, uh, a conspiracy that Max Shrek was actually a vampire, which is the reason why he could play the part so well of Orlock. Um, believe what you want to believe, I guess. Uh, who am I to say <laughs> you're full of shit or not, right? Um, now, the film, while recorded and, in, in, you know, comes out in 22, it actually takes place in 1838. So you can see from the film, you're know, watching the movie, um, like scenes where Hutter's walking through the city streets and stuff, and you know he's meeting with people that he... This film 
even though it is old, it's, it's from the 20s, it was made to look even older. Good stuff. Um, okay. The shooter which transports Count Orlock is called Impusa. This is a reference to Greek mythology. The Impusa is a type of shape-shifting phantom in Greek legends, always feminine. It was thought to prey on young men for seduction and for food, and in some versions, crave the blood of its victims. <laughs> it is typically identified with the flesh-eating Lamia and the bug bear like Mormo. Okay. That's interesting, right? Um, so the movie it's minus also um from Dracula, the movie it's, I can't remember the, the cowboy's name uh in the story of Dracula, but he's not in this and, and neither is Van Helsing. All right. Those guys, those characters are not in this on this Nosferatu story at all. And on top of that, Nosferatu, um, the name of the vampire, his name was Orlok. Nosferatu, it's an archaic Romanian word for vampire, right? Um, so, uh, Orlok, you know, I don't know. The, the, the whole, the, the name of the movie Nosferatu is iconic. You say Nosferatu to somebody, they know, they've seen an image of Max Shrek, you know, with the, they know, they can put the two to two together. But if you tell somebody, you know, Graf Orlock or Count Orlock, unless they've actually seen the movie um, and done any looking into it, they're not going to know exactly what the hell you're talking about, really. But um, uh, this movie did make several people's greatest movies of all time, including the Vatican. The Vatican. Wow, okay. Ah, this is the oldest surviving Dracula film and the first to be released. Interesting, huh? Um, the This movie... A classic. The the movie itself tells a familiar story. If you're familiar at all with the Dracula story, you know, uh, you know, uh, a count and from Transylvania buys land, uh, comes to live in your neighborhood. There's a crazy guy that's jumping around buildings and running through the streets, Renfield ish. Um, Hutter, Harker. Mina, you know, the story is the same. This guy comes in, this vampire, sees Ellen, of course, you know, wants some of that blood. But um, the, the, sto the storyline is, the story is very familiar. So if you're familiar with uh, the Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula, you're very, very familiar with this, this storyline and how it pans out. Although at the end of this movie, um, this is actually, I believe, um, up until this point here, th there was ways to do away with vampires, right? And it had nothing to do with sunlight. Uh, you had to behead them, you know, a stake through the chest. We've seen the Lost Boys, and the stake through the chest doesn't turn out good all the time. It's, it's gory. It's <laughs> shit everywhere. And decapitation of, you know, we've all heard the stories of through folklore uh, of bodies that were dug up with their nails longer, teeth longer, hair. They decapitate them, rip their hearts out, all kinds, all kinds of stuff they used to do in the back in the old days. But in this movie, Nosferatu, the way to kill a vampire, daylight, sunlight. Because there's a scene at the end of the movie here where he's leaving Ellen. Um, he walks across the, the the window. And as he's doing that, the sun's coming up. And of course, he turns, instead of running and hiding, ducking to the side to save himself, uh, he stays in the sunlight. <laughs> and he disappears. 
you know, into a pile of dust. Um, so I think that this is, I'm pretty sure that's where we get the idea. This movie specifically is where we get the idea that uh, daylight will kill a vampire. Okay. You like that? I like that. Now, all in all, I got to say, Nosferatu, as a classic movie, again, it's a silent film. Um, so if you don't have the attention span uh, to be able to sit here and watch a silent film, you're probably not going to dig it. Uh, you're not going to be able to get into it. And you're not going to be able to enjoy it for what it is. Uh, there's a remake called Nosferatu the Vampire from the 70s. I haven't seen that one. Um, I may check it out. I don't know. Um, and I think uh, they're also, they got, I think they have a remake coming out this year. Uh, how that's going to turn out, I don't know. We shall see. I'm actually probably going to watch that one from the 70s here, just to, you know, compare and contrast, see what it's like. Nosferatu from 1922, I love it. Simple as that. Uh, I think it's a great movie. I think uh, it's one of those movies that you can watch even though you know the story from Dracula, uh, you can watch the watch it and enjoy it for the magnificence that it is. The the Max Shrek, the the whole the image that he plays that he portrays as Orlock, it's iconic. It's uh, it's nightmare fuel, really. I mean, that vampire from Salem's Lot. When I was little and I saw that, fuck that messed me up for quite some time. Um, and of course, like I said, as I saw, as I got older and I saw Nosferatu, I knew, you know, that was very telling, very telling. Um, and you know, I really like some of these classic vampire movies too. Um, maybe I'll get with Christine and see if she wants to, cause I mean, there's a whole bunch of, there's a, I think there's a line of Dracula untold movies. Um, there's. All kinds of maybe I don't know. We'll think of something. You know, Dust to Dawn movies. Vamp, those are vampires. Some of these classical vampire movies are really good. Um, they they don't uh, romanticize or shimmer their vampires in daylight. They uh, they tell a story. You know, the blood, blood is the life, survival. Um. There's also some of those Hammer horror movies from the was it 60s. I don't remember. I'm going to check some of those out, too. We need to get on a ball with this because I like some classic vampire movies. Now, that's it for uh, Nosferatu. There's really not much to the movie. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing that some of these silent movies that I'm going to do here in the next couple of weeks, um, it's probably going to be pretty similar. Episodes aren't going to be that long. I'm just going to spit them out uh, to put them out, you know, because I want to get through some of these uh, classic 20s horror. Now, of course, we move to the 30s and we have stuff like, you know, I, I think Frankenstein, Dracula, you know, the universal stuff's coming out. Um, but I'm going to go decade by decade and cover probably, you know, three, four, five, four movies each decade um, that stand out to me. If you all have any ideas on uh, movies to cover, Hit me up. Let me know. Uh, you can send me an email over at guess what you're wrong OG at gmail.com um, or podcast you're wrong at gmail.com. Hit me up on the Facebooks, on the TikToks, on the uh, Instagrams, on the YouTubes here and stuff like that. You know, if you have any ideas, hit me up. Let me know. We do have other episodes coming out as well. Um, working on Demons 2 is coming up. And like I've said before, we have Ash vs. Evil Dead Season 2 coming out. We're going to be working on The Devil's Rejects with Mr. Tom Crumb and busting into some Romero classics with none other than Phil Billy Moonshine from over at philbillymoonshine.com. Now, those aren't scheduled yet, so don't get your hopes up as it, when they're coming out. But they are coming out. <laughs> uh, so that's it. That is Nosferatu. That is a little bit of housekeeping for uh, what's coming up and what's going to be going on going forward. 
Um, we are actually starting, I think I'm recording t- tomorrow night, I think, tomorrow night. Uh, we're actually starting the Saw franchise. Saw 1 is going to be coming out. So, Jiggy Saw Girl, I'm going to be hitting you up on that as well. Um, letting you see if you got any pointers. Say. Uh, but that's it. That is all we have for you this evening. Here at Guess What? You're Wrong. Nosferatu 1922. Check it out. Like I always like to say, sweet dreams, love, peace, and chicken grease. And that's going to do it for the day. Thanks for hanging out with me and letting me bend your ear for a while. Ain't no time for bad shine. (laughs) And until next time, don't forget. (laughs) You're wrong. (laughs) Later, Tater. This concludes our broadcast day. Good night and God bless America.